What's up? It is Dave. It's Duncan back from Metal Epidemic for another review. And for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new EP from Tech Death Masters Glass Casket. The band's new self titled EP will be released on June 9th via Silent Pendulum Records. Uh, from Winston Salem, North Carolina, oh. Glass Casket features gu guitarist Dusty and drummer Blake of legendary progressive metalers Between the Buried and Me. Back in action, now under the Glass Casket banner, officially for the first time since 2006. The guys are joined by fellow original members Adam Cody and Sid Menon, along with newest member Wes Hawk of Alluvial, uh, X the Faceless and Black Crown Initiate. I you were about to say Wes Borland, and I was like, that's how weird <laughs> <Bow mashup. wow. laughs> That'd be a different EP. Why did they get Wes in? <laughs> we don't know. Um, so this is the, the first release from Glass Casket since 2006. Um, most of the band were at college at the time, um, and I think had lots of kind of life things going on. Uh, Dusty and Blake also just released um, Alaska with uh, Between the Buried and Me not long after. So um, things just came to a bit of a halt with uh, with a glass casket. Um, in 2014, though, um, Dusty Waring, Waring and uh, Blake Richardson connected with a guitarist, uh, Wes Hoch, um, and made moves toward reviving Glass Casket. Uh, Waring states, back in 2014, Wes came and stayed with me for about a month and we put together some material with Blake and demoed out a few things. I guess it wasn't the right time, so we just sat in it for a while and stored riffs and parts away for when things lined up. Fast forward to about a year ago, Blake started working on some stuff and emailed us ideas. Everything kind of took shape from there and I started demoing guitars just to see where we were at how the songs made us feel. Everyone's pretty stoked on the material, so Blake tracked uh, his drums at home. I went in and tracked with producer Jamie King. Adam came in and did his vocals with Jamie and Wes tracked his solos at home. Very fast, very easy process for us at this point, and it came out better than expected. It was time. Um, the lyrics on the release are more focused on drive and determination instead of despair and heartache. Uh, they are also dealing with mental illness, um, overcoming obstacles and letting go of past tragedies. So, um, yeah, I was I was a big fan of Glass Casket. I uh, loved their, their 2006 album, uh, Desperate Man's Diary. Um, they they always kind of reminded me of like a kind of like a between the married me with a a kind of more discordant side piece, mm. like a like a red chord or something like that um, on the side. Um, very, it was always very punishing, which I which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, this one, um, four tracks, thirteen minutes long. <laughs> uh, that's uh, potentially a lot of listening, Duncan. If you're repeating that bad boy, thirteen minutes. I like it. It's also an EP, and you don't like EPs. So. I do not. I do not. <laughs> and I, I, I will. I will. Go into that a little well, that bit. That might more. be a point later on. No, <laughs> surprise, be. surprise. That's if if people do a shot when I say there's a lot there's a lot to enjoy about this release, yeah. then uh, people should also do a shot when they hear you moan about an EP being too short. <laughs> I just wanted more. That's the whole point of an extended play. It's supposed to leave you wanting more. Mm. Yeah. Um Yeah, so you're you're not you're not really getting the that kind of long form, kind of in depth. Um, well, you are on one song. <laughs> well, kind of on one song. Um, this, yeah, as you said, this is kind of given. This is a taster of of kind of where they're going with Glass Casket and what type of material um, you would kind of likely hear on a on a full length. Um, and I suppose, like, if it's not obvious from the from the, the kind of guys I've mentioned that are involved. Um, it's delivered, you know, a very high level musically, um, even more so than the, than the last album because that was two thousand and six. Um, yeah, it's things have moved on. A one bit. said, "Dave, it's been a while." Yes, they ha yes, they did say that, Duncan. They did, and it has been a while. Um, this is this is now kind of leveled up, more focused. This is more to the point. Um, it's an EP, so there's there's not really any fat on this whatsoever. Um, I, I kind of loved like the 2006 album. I loved that. It was just pulverizingly heavy, 
easy for me to say, and very technical, but it had had this kind of like early 2000s feel to it where it was mm. just a little bit more chaotic and kind of haphazard. Like the, the songs had kind of looser reins, you know, the, the, the production was also less clinical, um, which was kind of very much of, of that time. Um, but you can hear like over the last 10, 15 years, bands of a similar style have become more meticulous in their, their delivery, more um, yeah, both like musically and, and their production. Um, and I think that's yep. very much how this comes across. Um, it doesn't feel nearly as uh, spun out as their own material. Most of these tracks are like between one and three and a bit minutes, mm-hmm. uh, with only one track being slightly longer over six minutes. Um, so they've condensed it slightly. Um, the, uh, the the track lengths are a bit shorter, but still pack the tracks with a, with a kind of truckload of ideas. Um, you can still hear the the old school between the buried and me um, characteristics um, and a yeah. lot of the riffs on this. Um, it's, it's proggy. It's got you know the pinch harmonics are there. The the kind of dissonant chuggy grooves that put you in mind of that kind of like colors era or even kind of Alaska. Um, but it's it's got more of a kind of clinical technicality to it. Um, maybe a little hints of like ion dissonance or even the like black crown initiate at times as well. Um, super tight. Like the, mm-hmm. the musicianship is super tight on this. Um, very punchy. Um, they don't, they don't tend to linger on an idea for too long. Um, it's kind of in and out. Um, each riff just, you know, kind of creating maximum damage. Um, but, even though the songs are short, they they don't lack memorability either. There's mm-hmm. there's a ton of moments on each track that caught my attention, and I was like, oh, I'd like to hear that again. I would want to go back and listen to that, listen out for that riff coming around again. Um, so I I easily spun this nine or ten times. It's mm-hmm. such an easy listen, um, and the music is great. Like it sounds like Glass Casket have brought their sound right into 2023. It's it's not a repeat of anything they've done before. Um, and being an EP, um, it does, you know, it makes you want to hear more from the band. Um, my my highlight on this, though, is um, the vocals from Adam Cody. Um, he had a, a very kind of savage tone. Like back in the day, his voice was just really fucking visceral. Always had a, a really cool variation of like different ranges on the releases. But his voice is, is kind of matured like brilliantly over the years. I think he sounds even more impressive um, on this, as does the rest of the band, obviously, but th- the vocal really stood out. Um, I think that the last track, uh, For the Living, um, where he's just he's just kind of in and out of these like different ranges, and it mm. sounds awesome. That the, the low tone that he goes to is fucking unbelievable. Yeah. When I heard it, I was like, I looked at the, the press release, I was like, is, is George Corpgrinder guesting on this? Because... <laughs> That fucking sounds like him. Yeah. It's like I honestly thought he was guessing on one of the tracks. Um, it's very similar in tone to his kind of lower register. Um, there's also a little bit of a kind of Randy Bly thing. Hundred percent, a, a Randy Bly specifically yeah. on for the living. Yeah, he has 100%. a couple of those, a couple of those notes where if you close your eyes, you would, you would definitely think he was <laughs> yeah. on it. He goes a little bit more southern for a, for yeah, a little I bit. I love it. I love it. Uh, it was really cool. Um, but yeah, I thought he sounded fantastic on this um and as i said the musicianship on the ep is is brilliant the, the guitar work is tremendous the riffs are interesting they're moorish uh, solos are, are super slick um blake richardson obviously is a, an absolute beast behind the drum kit so you can expect mm. plenty of like, intricate drum you know bass drum patterns there's you know some nice time signatures thrown in there loads of switch ups um and I, I think the last track of the ep is probably my favourite. Um, I would agree, yeah. Just for the reason they kind of get to flex a bit more with the, the longer run time, and it's probably the most varied um, track on the on the release. Also finishes with a groove, which is ridiculous. Yes, yes it does. <laughs> fucking... Grooves fucking everywhere on this. Um, yeah. Not really a lot to say negatively about this, to be honest. Come on, get out of your system. <laughs> you know you're wanting to, and everyone's okay. waiting to do it's, a shot. So. It's only for, right, it's four tracks, right? Yep. Okay, I... You know what you know my feelings on EPs, but what I feel like is it feels like it's just getting going when it ends. Like yep. I was like, ah, it's finished. I'm like, oh god, right, it's finished. The other thing is that the first track of the EP is kind of a a builder. Like it it repeats. I, see, I love the the track because they right. do what every band should do, which is instead of squandering 
an intro track with like like weird noises and like they actually are like that. All right, this is an intro, mm-hmm. so let's actually just make it a song. So like mm-hmm. you get is what is one minute twenty seconds long, yeah, and it is a very 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 short building progressive death metal song that swings right into track two yeah. so i don't think they squander the space on it mm. you could argue it would allow them the real estate to put another track in, just which, exactly what i was going to say Duncan. which i wouldn't, dis- I wouldn't disagree with uh, i think because track one and two blend so well into yeah. each other you could in theory call that one track and it's yeah. actually kind of sneaky that they've not done that and yeah. um, that you could have another song in there just for for for, for um flexing sake yeah. but I do like a band that's like, all right, we're going to have an intro. May as well just write a song. So yeah, yeah, I I do I do I do like it, but I just feel like I want either another song on there or yeah. make that first track into a full song. Um, but taking into consideration the quality of the remaining tracks, um, I still really enjoyed it, and, and I can't wait to hear what they do with a full length. I think it's going to be really interesting to hear them go like full form and get to really expand on on their sound. Uh, what about you? What did you think? Uh, as a fan, did you listen to much of their previous stuff? or? So I remember that debut. I right. remember that debut because you were high on it. Um, yeah. So that's usually a good indicator. Um, and I'll be honest, and this is where I get like fucking shouted at. I, if memory serves, I preferred Glass Casket's debut album over Between the Buried and Me's debut album, <laughs> um, which I know is sacrilege and the internet fucking hates me now, but mm-hmm. you wouldn't. Um, this is really 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 smart right it's really Mm. smart in that it feels like it is like you're negative i'm going to spin to a positive here it feels like it's building to their sound yeah i feel like track one two and three is essentially opening the door for glass casket which is track four to Mm. me right yeah and i feel if we get a full length album i want a full length of track four Mm. That's kind of what I want. It's very varied. It switches up really, really, really smartly, quickly, without feeling like, oh, you just flung that riff in there. Oh, well, that was an idea you didn't want to lose, so we'll just segue it in here. Mm-hmm. It switches, like, to stick on track four, it switches between, like, really punishing death metal into southern grooves. It has choral-esque, like, like backing vocals which are clearly just like samples or, or, or something that's playing on the end to give this degree of grandeur and a huge epicness mm. um, and all those things are not pre- uh, prevalent on the rest of the tracks the death metal's there but not nearly the flourishes of that kind of virtuosity that you expect from the members of the bands mentioned um, it actually feels like Merrymaker feels is one of the reasons I kind of like it as an intro kind of feels straight to the fucking point like mm. if you had never heard Glass Casket before and you'd be like that, oh here's another between the buried and me. I think it is the perfect sorbet. It just com- completely cleans the palette of any preconception that you have. Alright, oh, these guys are releasing a death metal album. Mm-hmm. Um like you switch and you're like, alright, oh, these guys are releasing a like technical death metal album. Like it like gets straight into it and mm. you like you once again without knowing the pedigree of the individuals involved you could be forgiven for thinking these things don't marry up you get those flurries it's difficult to unpick a songwriting style um, or technique from a different project so they are there uh, let them go was the first one where i started picking up those kind of between the buried and me flurries um which are great and it's even even track two like if, uh, the reason i say track one and two could be one track is because i felt the flow in between the two felt like one track yeah yeah um so once again it wouldn't surprise me if it was written as one track and maybe then surgically split mm. uh, as an idea on the ep which once again i'm not against mm. um prison of empathy um if you put a siren, if you put an air raid siren in a song, my dick goes hard. Because <laughs> you just instantly know, oh, shit's a bit of kickoff. Um, and it does, like, when that kicks, I'm, I was like, oh, here we go. And then the riffs get fucking savage. Uh, even more savage than they were before. 
Vocally, you're right. I think the vocalist has a, a very versatile tone, which mm. he actually holds back on quite a lot. He does. Until that last track. Yeah. And then it's all the more reason for kind of one and more. Um, because on that last track, he really just lets himself fly. But then I think the band give him more to work over. Mm. Um uh, creatively and uh, and the way the song's composed, I think it allows them to do that. Uh, yeah, Randy Blythe was all through my head just over that section. It has, it's not, it's not a Lama God section, and it's not really southern, mm. but it kind of has a groove of something southern. And his vocal just hits that that Blythe register. Yeah. That one set is just it's difficult not to smile, but his lower tone is fucking savage, absolutely savage. So. On top of that as well, you get a, like... I'm glad that you mentioned this. The production on this one is a lot cleaner, but I don't think it falls into modern trappings. Mm. There's a lot of tech death metal now that is, like, it's so clean. Yep. That, like, if someone told me, like, we've programmed the first... AP, you know, the first AI machine mm. with all the all this context of all this death metal and told it to spin out a track. Some of it feels a bit like that, and I didn't feel that at all. I, th- no. I felt that there was still very much the human element mm-hmm. behind what the band was doing. It just so happens that technology now is a lot better than it was in 2006 yeah. uh, to, to kind of measure things out. And it's all here, it's all clean, and it's, but it, it, like, it's the, the guitars are still punchy and heavy and nasty and snarly um and it's indicative of that i don't know if i would want them to have a kind of chaotic 2000 era sound i, I like no. i kind of kind of feel like it's um it's jamie king so he does all the between the married and me stuff and, yeah. and their stuff very similar you know it's it's it's, it's technical but it's got a an organic feel to it as well. Yes, yeah, and that that shows, and it, it, it washes out really, really nice on this one, and it kind of makes me. I don't want them to get lost, and I also don't want them to be a band who were on the cusp of something that was very fresh and new that disappeared for a while that have come back when that genre has flourished mm. and just try and sound like the bands that who have obviously emulated them are being are being influenced. I don't yeah. want that. I want the band to come back sounding kind of like they are. And it, this is a great representation of what they have to offer. I'm going to side with you on this one. My biggest complaint here is I feel there could be another one or two songs in here mm. easily. Yeah. And I I only think this EP is hitting its stride when it finishes. Mm. And I'd like I don't know is this them testing the water to see if there are if, if there is sort of interest from people out there. Mm. Um, it certainly got me interested yeah. i'm certainly my, my attention is fully peaked and knowing the current situation between the buried and me at the moment um if they want to spend a bit more time doing more glass casket stuff for a couple of years mm. i don't necessarily think that would be a bad thing i think this feels fresh it feels like re-energized i think there's legs here i think there's I think there's a band here. You know what I mean? I think they could, there's a long form for sure that would be really, really interesting and get out on the road. Mm. Um, there's no shortage of touring bands that they could be playing with now. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. think before they may have been the oddity on the bill, mm. uh, but nowadays there's no shortage of that. And I think they do enough different and have a sound which is enough unique to them that it would make them stand out on any kind of tech death metal kind of bill. Um, yeah, it's really, really, really good. Uh, I, I think it's it did exactly what an EP is supposed to do. It got me interested and excited for a long form release. I'm yeah. just hoping we get that long form release. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, okay, so what we're thinking on the scores for um, these uh, self titled EP from Glass Casket? Um, I think I think it does what I expect the band wanted and gets people talking about Glass Casket again. Yeah. Um, the material on this gives you a taster of what the band are all about now in 2023. 20, and it sounds fucking awesome. It's, they've, they've kind of blended a great mix of, of groove and technicality that makes you want to hear more. Um, okay. It's not anything I haven't heard done before, um, but it's done really fucking well. Um, and it's, it's great to hear how they've evolved since 2006 
Um, so I am I am all for a full length. Um, I'd love to hear more from these guys. Um, I'm going to go a four out of five on this EP. Duncan, what say you? We are just syncing up oh. uh, very well tonight. That's four from me as well. Um, super curious to see what they do next, and hopefully they won't make us wait years to do it. Um, I think if they can knock out something like this relatively quickly yeah um imagine what they could do with a couple of months to put an album out so yeah yep. four this is really 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 good and yeah hopefully um gets a a, a new generation of fans to uh, there's crossover here there's plenty of crossover mm. I, it's not too much of a jump if you like between the buried and me to, to listen to glass casket but it's different enough that yeah you know it's not just oh they're doing a side project that sounds like the thing mm. done before so yeah really enjoyed it Nice. Uh, so the EP drops on June 9th on Silent Pendulum Records. Links below to the band and the pre-order. Let us know what you think in the comments below. That is the review. Thank you for checking it out. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. A miracle, a